So my name is Chris Rusnak. I'm one of the emergency physicians here in Saskatoon. Um, as Kami told us before, uh, HIV is a big problem in Saskatchewan. And uh, so my project has been to try and change the culture around HIV testing in the emergency department. Um, so in line with WHO guidelines recognizing the importance of knowing your HIV status, uh, we believe that the emergency room uh, visits could provide a good opportunity to provide HIV testing to a wide range of patients, uh, some of uh, whom might not otherwise seek testing. So uh, my project, uh, we have created an opt-out system where all patients visiting the emergency department and requiring phlebotomy will also be encouraged to have an HIV test. Uh, for uh, the details of the implementation, I'll talk about it at the, at the poster, um, but what we did is we needed to alter our current testing model moving away from individual physician-led testing and follow-up, and we've replaced this with a, a more collaborative nursing-led um, uh, process involving resources from emergency medicine, public health, biochemistry, and infectious diseases. We're just getting ready to, to kind of launch a, a bigger two-month uh, trial where we hope to uh, do 1,000 HIV tests uh, through St. Paul's Hospital Emergency Department. What I intended to talk with you about today was the um, difficulty I had in kind of establishing myself as the leader of the team, uh, working with a bunch of physicians who are kind of more senior to myself or, or perhaps even more subject expertise. Um, then, and I guess the value of, you know, the, the, the conference we had and talked about uh, effectiveness of running meetings really, for me, let me execute effective meetings and then... I became the natural leader of the team and we started to make progress. So that was really valuable. I was going to talk more about that and then last week happened. Um, and uh, myself and Dr. Apondo, one of the public health uh, people, uh, were walking through St. Paul's emergency and we were talking about getting ready to launch this and putting up banners and balloons and there was a mention of a cake. Um, and. Uh, and we thought, well, maybe even this is something that if we if we talk to the Star Phoenix or the media, they'd be interested in, in covering and just kind of building momentum for our, our change initiative. So I left that meeting. John Mark was going to talk to his troops about really kind of to get some posters and whatnot, and I'm going to talk to the media. So on the way home that day, I called, and I just called the media department at Star Phoenix, and I left my name and number and said, maybe you'd be interested in this. Uh, fast forward to the, the next day, and I was driving to a tennis match, and the, my phone rings. And so I answered that, and it was a reporter from the Star Phoenix. And at this time, I'm still thinking that I'm trying to sell her on maybe this would be a nice thing for, for them to cover. And so I kind of ramble off of why I think this is important. Then I go play a tennis match. Uh, and after the tennis match, my phone had blown up, and I had many, many phone calls. Uh, they had reached out to the media department, uh, and then I had more phone calls. Uh, we basically decided that I would not be the face of this, and uh, <laughs> John Mark would take over, uh, and I was fine with that. And then on Tuesday, I get another phone call, and it's a reporter, and she wants to take some photos or something like that. And I said, I can't talk to you. Um, <laughs> And then, she, then uh, I, I let the, actually Mark Waba know that they, the story was going to happen. And uh, uh, then more phone calls and more meetings. And there was, you know, had I gone rogue? Uh, <laughs> so th the, the story did happen. And I guess my, my, uh, my take home is that anytime you talk to a reporter, even if you think you're just pitching an idea, what you say might end up on the cover of the Star Phoenix, which it did yesterday.